I am excited to be here today. Hey, I'm always excited about the word of God. You know, God has done a great thing for all of us here and uh, for many who are listening. He has introduced us to his word rightly divided. Man, that makes a difference in our lives. That brings about an excitement with the word of God because we can understand God's word clearly focused. You know, we, we, we can see the plan of God and we can see what God is doing in his progressive revelation. Man, that brings excitement in the heart. I'll tell you, before I understood rightly divided, I wasn't this excited about the word of God. Hey, man, I like the religious services and stuff, you know, and all the little uh, lights and bells and whistles. But when the word of God became real in my heart, the understanding of his word, you know, that's, that's where true development comes when you understand, you know, that's where change can take place. And I'm just telling you, man, I'm, I'm always excited about the word of God. And I just thank God for the great teachers that God has brought our way, you know, Eric Newman, and, uh, you know, uh, John for staging and, 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 and Richard Jordan and, and, and a whole lot of rightly dividing teachers, man, who have pouring into our hearts weekend. You know, some of you guys, you know, you, you, you on Bible study four, five hours a week. What's wrong with y'all? It's like, well, what's wrong with me? I have to say to say, what's wrong with me? How is it that I'm at Bible study five hours, six hours, and that's not count my own personal time of studying the word of God. But that's what rightly dividing can do. Mm -hmm. When you understand this word, it becomes real to you and it pulls into your heart and you're able to, to, to grow in God's word as he would have you to go. So, you know, I want to say that, you know, all the confusion is moved out of the way. And now we can see clearly, and now we have a, a purpose and a mission and a call by Almighty God that God has, in his grace, has blessed us to be part of. I'm going to start uh, this evening with our banner scripture. You know, I, I'm, I'm sure none of you would have to really even turn to it. Uh, you know, Second Timothy 215. Man, we know that scripture, man. We wear that scripture. We got it, we got it tied around our arms, and you know, in our we got little pieces of it in our pocket. We know that scripture because that is important to us. And we know that it tells us that God tells us to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Man, we know the importance of that scripture, that those words of Paul that tell us that we have to study to show ourselves approved unto God. So I want to talk just for a little while from the subject, a life approved unto God. That's it, a life approved unto God. Man, just what does that look like? A life approved unto God. Yeah, so we have to look into the scripture. And today, uh, I really want this message to minister to those who are, are, are looking into rightly dividing, trying to understand where we are coming from and why we have such passion for teaching and showing them and, you know, uh, uh, what God is doing in this word and, 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 and showing them God's uh, progressive revelation, time pass, uh, the but now, this dispensation of grace in which we live in and the ages to come. You know, we, we just have such a passion to show them that. And new believers, you know, I mean, believers, they're, 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 receive Christ, you know, and they have Christ, and but they're trying to understand how they can grow 
stronger and deeper and richer. The Bible says, let the word dwell in you richly in all wisdom. They want to have the word to dwell in them richly. And they're looking for answers. And we, God has blessed us with the answer. And we know that answer is understanding his word rightly divided. So this message, I, I, I pray that it would touch the hearts of new uh, 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 believers who, who, are, who are trying to grow in their word and want to understand this word more richly. But I also wanted to encourage us. We we uh, we understand this 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 word rightly divided, but we need to be encouraged too. You know. So this message, I also wanted to touch us and to encourage us to to, to that we may go forward, continuing that we may stay on this journey and we may uh, uh, glorify God as we reach out to reach others and other souls to let them know what God is doing uh, in this dispensation of grace. And then those uh, also, I pray that this message would touch those who, who are in rightly dividing. Now, I find this very difficult, but they have been those who have been in rightly dividing and understanding it and growing in it, but some kind of way religion has pulled them away. And you know, they miss the religious service and the fellowship. You know, it can be kind of lonely sometimes when you are preaching truth. Everybody don't want to hear truth. You know, I mean, when I first got into rightly dividing and understanding it and, 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 and was, was caught on fire with it, I thought everybody wanted to hear it. Man, I just knew everybody wanted to understand God's word clearly to grow in God's word. But it was, it's not long after you find out that is not the case. Everybody who's going to church and, and, and participating in church services is not really all that excited about growing deeper in the word of God. You see, so there have been those who, you know, have been in it and have turned back and gone back to traditional uh, services, religious services, because of other things. Demas has forsaken me, Paul said. And he was right there with the Apostle Paul. He was with the one who had the gospel of the grace of almighty God. But Demas, having loved this present world, turned and went the other way. Can you imagine? You put the apostle Paul, the foundation of truth. You know, you're with the one who's, who's bringing forth uh, this gospel message given to him from heaven's glory, from Jesus Christ and turn and go back. So those who may have, we, we want you back. Mm. We want you back. We want you in the right place. You know, rightly dividing the word of God is the right place at the right time. God has called us for this mission, this purpose, this, this message to go forth in this world that has turned it's back on him. I'll say you're living in a present evil world. But that's okay because Jesus Christ came to deliver us from it. So we are we're gonna be okay. We may not have the fanfare and all the money and all the glamour and all the lights and the big buildings and the soft seats and the sweet music and all that thing, but we have the heart, the heart of God. Mm. We have the heart of God, man. You, you cannot deny that. We have the heart of God for this hour, and we are committed to going forth 
And bringing this word rightly divided, rightly dividing is not a fad, it's not some kind of philosophy, it's not some new thing. It is the pure word of God brought forth so that others may grow in the grace and the knowledge of Almighty God. That's what we have. So I want to talk about a life approved unto God, a life that is in line with God's will. In the book of uh, First Timothy, the second chapter, and the fourth verse. You can turn that first Timothy, second chapter, and the fourth verse. This scripture uh, gives us a, a foundation that we can spread out from it in order to understand God's will in just about every area. With our states? It's first Timothy. Second chapter. Second cha I'm sorry, David. I may have said second chapter and the fourth, no. fourth verse. Thank you. First Timothy, second chapter, fourth verse. And it tells us about the will of God. Mm. You know, it's God's will, listen now, that all should be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. Man, under that salvation and truth. Salvation and truth. That can be the, the, the title and the banner that explains the will of God. Mm -hmm. Salvation in this area and truth and knowledge in this area. Come into the knowledge of Almighty God. And so uh, God wants all to be saved, but he doesn't want you to stop there. And this is where we're having uh, a problem in the church today. Yeah, there are a lot of believers. They're saved. They've believed on God. They've received God. But when it comes into the knowledge of the truth, they, they, they fade away. I've talked to so many believers and they say, yes, I just want to be saved and go to heaven. I'm not interested in getting all that deep into the understandings of God's word. You know, I just want to live my life and be satisfied. But God wants more than just the salvation. That's the, be that's the beginning. God wants us to grow in his word. So, for all the new believers and all those who are thinking about receiving Christ, we want to look at a few scriptures under the salvation. First Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 4. If you're going to be saved, this is how you are saved. By believing in God's word, his death burial, and resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach. Listen what Paul is saying here. The gospel which I preach. There's a lot of gospel. You know, Israel had a gospel which their gospel was we're going into a kingdom. We're going to go into the kingdom. Our king is coming. He's going to bring us into our kingdom. We're going to be the nation that sits upon the hill. We're going to be a delight to the world. The nations are going to come to us. And we're going to be that light unto the Gentiles. But Paul says something here. He says the gospel which I preach. He calls it three times in his epistles, my gospel. Okay, the gospel that I preach unto you, which also ye have received wherein ye stand. Okay, by which also ye are saved. This is the gospel that saves. Okay, it's not the band upstairs or, or how good you are or who you know or how big your Bible, how, it's none of those things. 
This is the gospel which you are saved. If you keep it, remember what I've preached unto you, unless you believe in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I, I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to Scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to Scripture, and that he was seen, well, seen of Cephas and seen, seen of the, the apostles. His death, burial, and resurrection. When you believe in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, that his blood was shared, shared upon Calvary's cross, Calvary's cross for you, and you receive that for your salvation, this is where salvation comes from. You see, this is where uh, a life approved unto God starts from. You know, we have to all be careful that when we are witnessing to uh, uh, individuals who may think they're saved, may think they're saved by some other form of gospel, we have to make sure before we start out that they understand the gospel wherein they are saved. Man, you can go days and nights and weeks ministering to them, but if they're really not saved, they really haven't received the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You're just doing a lot of witnessing, and they're unable to receive what God has for them for their salvation. A natural man receiveth not the things of God. Neither can he. They're the things of God are, 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 are foolishness to him. Neither can he know the things of God because the things of God are spiritually discerned. Hey, we have to make sure that they have received the message, the gospel that Paul says that I preach, the dead burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. Let's turn to that because it explains to them uh, uh, how they are saved. You know, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. And this explains to how they are saved not by their own efforts, their own strength, their own abilities, but they're saved for, for what God, he had made uh, him, Christ, to be sent for us that we might be made. Listen, listen to what he said. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. This is how you say God has done something through his son, Christ Jesus, from that through that death, burial, and resurrection. And that has brought about the salvation. He 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 made him to be sent for us. He who knew no sin. He took upon all of our sins upon that cross. Okay. And when we believe in that finished work of that cross, we receive his righteousness. That's the righteousness that covers us. When God looks at us now, he doesn't see us in our weak feel uh, of selves, our inabilities and our shortcomings. He doesn't see us in that. He sees us covered in the righteousness of his son. That's the righteousness every individual will need if he's going to be or have a life approved unto God. He has to be covered in the righteousness of his son and the finished work. And then Titus tells us, Titus, if you look at Titus, the third chapter, yeah, let's look at that. We're talking about a life approved unto God. We're talking about uh, a life that is in line with God's will. Titus 3 and verses 4. Titus 3 verses 4. We're going to read 4 through 7. But listen this here. This is, man, listen. God steps out 
in his grace and his mercy, God made a decision to bless and to, and to save you and to give you eternity or eternal life. This is God's greatness at its best, reaching down to us, to us who, who didn't deserve it, but God in his love and in his mercy, he said, but after the kindness and the love of God, our savior toward men appeared, Listen to what he says, not by works of righteousness, righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shared upon us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. The love, the kindness, the grace, the mercy that God shared upon us to bring us into his family. This is what a life approved unto God looks like. This is what a life that is in line with God's will looks like. But salvation, again, is not enough just by itself to complete, to completely fulfill God's plan and purpose for your life. Hey man, we if, if 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 we just got if we was just to get saved and just go off and not uh, have a mission or commission or or uh, uh, not be ambassadors to reach others, then that would be okay. But God has a plan and a purpose. That's why He says, "It is my will, the will of God, that ye be saved and come into the knowledge." of the truth and grow in the knowledge of God because God wants knowledge in us. This is what rightly dividing is about. God pouring knowledge into us when we understand his word, when we clearly understand what he's doing. So he says to us in, Corinth, in, in, in Colossians 1, let's turn to Colossians 1, 9, Colossians 1, 9 and 10. And listen with how Paul, Paul explains the importance of knowledge and we receive in knowledge once we have been saved. In Colossians 1, let's just read that, uh, that fourth verse first, okay? Here's Paul. Now, this is the scene. Paul is... Um, Paul has received word that them in Colossians have received Jesus Christ. Man, they have received it. He've gotten the word. He's writing back to them. You know, he's saying that uh, since we heard of your faith in Jesus Christ and the love which he had for all the saints, as Paul says, since we heard of that, you know, uh, if you go down to that ninth verse, for this cause, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I want to tell you today, there are many that you are desiring to come into a greater relationship with God a greater understanding of his word. But Paul's telling us here, it starts with prayer. Man, sometimes we just want to pull out the knowledge that God has given us. We, we just want to lay it out. Man, look, look at this. Man, receive this. This is going to bless you. But we don't, if we don't start with prayer for that individual, then they're, they're, they're not going to be able to receive what you have to offer. That's where the work starts, with prayer. Paul says, since the day we heard, we do not cease to pray for you. Man, are we praying for those individuals? Are we lifting them up in prayer and asking God to give us the direction and how to approach them and how to minister to them? because Sometimes it's an overload. 
You're trying to tell them, but, but the Bible says this, but you haven't done any praying or, or prepping them for what you have to say. And it's not getting through. And we get discouraged. Well, I tried to tell them they didn't want to listen. You know, we have to go in prayer for the individuals that we want to reach with this good news, with this sound doctrine that we have, with this this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. We have to start it with prayer. Just like the Apostle Paul directs us here. And he says, we are praying for them that they might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, you see, and being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. We want them to increase in the knowledge of God. You're going to have to start with prayer. You're going to have to get a word from God as to how to reach them. You can't just pull up. Well, look, I wanted, I want to just tell you about time past, a but now, and the ages to come, you know, and just and try to br bring the whole thing to them. It's like, I don't hear you. Because my religious system has told me something different. You go up to somebody and just tell them that, you know, we are baptized, you know, into the dead, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We're not that water baptism. And, you know, we believe that we should give graciously, not of necessity, uh, cheerfully. God desires a cheerful giver. And you go to start telling them those things and you haven't prayed. You haven't sought God how to reach them. You didn't lost them before you even got started. That's why Paul says, we got to pray. We haven't stopped. We, don't, we haven't ceased praying for you since we heard that you received Jesus Christ. We haven't ceased. Have you ceased praying? They'll just say, Lord, pray. Well, I'm going to pray for you that you understand. No, you have to be in continuous prayer. So this is what he says, this is what Paul said. And then in um, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, let's turn back there again. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. We're talking about the knowledge part of God. How to get the knowledge to them, okay? Yeah, they, the salvation is taken care of. But see, the number one thing the enemy don't want them to have is the knowledge of the word, the knowledge of what God is doing, what God has provided for them. He can't do anything about the salvation part, you know, but the knowledge part is greatly under attack today. And so, and so 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 tells us, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new create, new creature, not creation. He's a new creature. He's the body of Christ today. Okay. He's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. God wants to bring them into a newness of what he's doing today through the knowledge of the word of God. So yeah, a life that is in line with God's will is a life that is saved by the gospel that Paul says that I preach, the dead burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. His shed blood, his forgiveness, his imputed righteousness, all those things, his forgiveness, you know, his, his giving of his son, you know, uh, that we might be saved, that we might be made the righteousness of God. A life uh, that's approved unto God is a life in line with God's will in knowledge, Growing in the knowledge and the grace of God, not just satisfied with salvation, but understanding the knowledge is a major part of God's program and plan for our lives. We have to uh, understand that if we are going to have this life approved unto God, a life approved unto God appreciates God's grace. Mm -hmm. Man, you got and listen, listen. 
You cannot appreciate what God has done for you if you do not understand. You, you know, you, you have a knowledge of it, but it cannot be richly dwelling within you unless you understand his word clearly focused, you see. And so, yeah, we got to appreciate God's grace. Let's see what he says in Ephesians, the second chapter. If you turn that, starting at that fourth verse. Ephesians 2 and 4, and I want you to take these words to heart, okay? Uh, the Holy Spirit inspired these words for a reason, and he wants you to take these words to heart. And this is what he said, but God, that's what he starts it off. We talked a little bit early about the butts of the Bible, but God, but God who is rich in mercy. And for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, mm. God loved us. You know, God didn't wait till we get it all. We still don't have it all together. If God, if we, if God had to wait till we get together, ain't nobody would be saved. You see, so God, who is rich with God, you know, who is rich in mercy and his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we are dead in our sins. What has he done? He has quickened us together with Christ Jesus. That means what? His spirit has come to live within you, to give you what you need, to be all you need in God's, God's program. His spirit, he has quickened us together by grace. We got to appreciate that. By mm -hmm. grace, mm -hmm. ye are saved. And not only that, he has raised us up together and he has made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hey, we're going to talk about that a little later. Your life is hid with God in Christ Jesus. He has raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come, God has a plan, a purpose. He's going to show you all. You're going to be, you're going to look a whole lot better than you're looking right now. You're going to be, man, glorious trophies of the mercy and the love of God. Oh, how he showed his kindness towards you. In the ages to come, he might show forth the, the, the riches of his grace in his kindness toward you and me, and all of those who have come and received his son, Jesus Christ. By grace are you saved. Mm. Through faith and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of any of your efforts, your works, or oh, how good are we? It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should go. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. You are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. That's what you are. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. And listen to what it says in verse uh, 10, that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, mm. which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, <laughs> unto good works, God has done all these works for us. Man, his mercy his loving kindness, his quickening spirit. You see, he, his grace that he has given us, him raising us up, seeing us in heavenly places, his kindness, it is exceeding riches of his love and his grace and his kindness. These are good works that God has done toward us to, to position us to be what he purposed in his heart. He purposed it. He purposed it that he would show us in heaven as his glorious grace. All of heaven is going to stand up and salute and at the grace and the mercy that God has shown upon your life. Man, you're somebody. I'm telling you, you are somebody. All of heaven are waiting for your arrival so they can see the mighty works, the exceeding riches of God's grace in his kindness toward you. 
<laughs> yeah, that's something to be excited. Well, you want to know why I'm so excited? That's why I'm excited. I'm excited because all that God has done and what he's doing and what he's going to continue to do, no matter what's going on in your life, God's grace is sufficient. You're going to have to read that and believe it. His grace is sufficient. We may not understand it, but still God's grace is sufficient. Paul didn't understand it, but his grace was still efficient. You know, Paul, you know, well, if his grace is sufficient, hey, man, I'll take pleasure in infirmities, necessities, and, you know, uh, hardships and things, you know. You know, my perspective changes when I understand God's grace is sufficient. Sometimes God is more after your perspective than he is after changing your situation. And we got to, we, we got to learn. See, Paul had to learn some things. He got in Philippians 4 chapter and said, I've learned whatsoever uh, state I'm in, whether I'm up or down, you know, I've learned that, you know, to be content in whatever situation I find us. We have to learn something. God is just not going to give us everything how we want, what we want, when we want, the way we know. God wants you to learn as you're going through this journey. And that's what Paul had to do. So, hey, man. Life that appreciates God's grace, a life approved unto God is a life that appreciates God's grace. I want you to please, for me, repeat what you said about God's more interested. God is awesome. God wants you to, your perspective to change in areas of your life. You've been looking at things wrong. Oh. You know, sometimes we'll look at it and it's the, the, we only see the negative. We only see what's happening to me. But what about what God is doing for you so you could be a blessing to somebody else? Man, listen, I've never drank, I've never smoked, I've never did drugs. You know, I've always tried to do positive things, just things like that. But I, I, I got faults just like everybody else. But Whatever my faults are, God, that God has delivered me from, I'm an authority in that area now. Whatever you've been through, you are an authority. If God allowed you to go through it and brought you through and you've learned of God, now when you speak to somebody about that, guess what? You speak with authority. I may tell somebody, well, Hey, man, I'm going to pray for you. You know, just trust the word. And, then, you know, I believe help, ask God to help you to stop drinking. And, uh, you know, just keep praying and stuff like that. People like, walk away from me. Oh, yeah, okay. But somebody who has been through it, man, let me tell you what happened to me. What I went through. How I suffered as a result of that. The things I had to do. I know I, I can feel you because they can feel you. You really care. You really understand their situation. You now have authority. God is building authorities in you. So your perspective sometimes has to change on what the things, because you have to start from the right point. God's grace is sufficient. And so, Lord, show me what you're trying to teach me in this so I can be a blessing to others. Yeah, a life that understands God's word is understand God's grace, his sufficiency in his grace. Is a life approved unto God. That's what he wants. He wants you to understand his grace. And a life that understands God's word rightly divided. Hey, man, I just got to go back to our scripture. Paul says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. As you study God's word rightly divided, you become a life approved, approved unto God. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, as you study, you become a That's And look, let me tell you something. If you don't have this word, understood and uh, rightly divided God's truth and power and word cannot richly 
dwell within you. I've, I've thought about this and his wisdom, his grace, his power, his love, his your desire to help others and to serve serve others. I used to let me tell you a little, a little just a little story. Man, I I I I would be studying God word, God's words a long time before I came in rightly divided. But I used to wonder what the world is wrong with me, man. I see all these other people out here doing stuff, and I, it's like I. I know they don't study the word more than me. Mm. I know they don't love God more than I love God. Why do you, you know, every time you look around, they want to run and do this and do this and that. Like, what, what is wrong with me? But when, because, because I was looking for truth. I wasn't caught up in uh, the little blimp blam action stuff. I was looking for truth mm. and I couldn't put the pieces together. And so I just couldn't bring it like I wanted. I didn't want to be hip a hypocrite with trying to tell them to do something. But, and I don't understand it. But when the word of God clicked that, when he clicked that switch, the right to divide it, I haven't stopped talking since. Man, I'm like, whoop. What you want to talk? You want me? You want ten dollars? I give you ten dollars. Let me talk to you, man, man. I haven't stopped. The word of God set me on fire. Okay, and and it, well, my wife will tell you, man. She, she'll tell you like, oh God, I got I got to get a break from this guy. Yeah, you know? it's like it's like it's like I was like, man, and then or oh, then all of a sudden. The pandemic hit, and it told me stay inside and don't go nowhere. What you want to tell me that for? In the middle of me learning right division, man, you ain't gotta tell me. I mean, wait, you tell me I can stay inside and study all day? It's like, oh love, it was the greatest thing, man. It was the and and, and I'm just telling you, man, that's what happened when you. It produces something in you. It works within you. The work the divine. When you understand, uh, you uh, 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 to have a life approved unto God, a life that understands God's word rightly divided, um, is a life. This is what God wants you to understand his word, not be swayed by religious opinions, by legalism, by person, personal agendas of other others. He wants you to be in his word sincerely, have a sincere heart for him. God don't want you to love him because you don't want him to be mad at you. He wants you to love him because you know who he is and what he has done for you. That's why he wants you to love you. He don't want to force you. He wants you to love him because his, your, his word is so good to your soul. The love of Christ constrained me, Paul said. His love for me and my love for him constrains me. That's what God is after in everyone's life who comes to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Yeah, a life that understands God's word. You understand that you're living in a new dispensation. God wants you to know that. The enemy don't want you to know that. The enemy is still mad by his defeat. He thought he had God figured out. God made an uh, 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 open show of his principalities and powers, you know, triumphantly, triumphantly, triumphant over them in an open show. He, he don't want you to, the number one thing he wants to keep from you is the knowledge of God. That's why we, we have so much pushback as rightly dividers. You know, be, because because we're bringing clear, pure understanding of God's word. There's going to be a pushback. Religion don't like that. Mm -hmm. It does not like that. But you have to stay in where God. We're in a new dispensation, you see. And so uh, we have a new apostle. Rightly dividing understands we have a new apostle, Apostle Paul who was called from heaven's glory on that Damascus road when Jesus spoke to him and said, Paul, 
why are you persecuting me? You know, who are thy Lord? You see, and God used him, changed the program, and used the apostle Paul. See, if you read it in the book of um, uh, Isaiah, the 49th chapter, and the sixth verse, you will find that he said, I have set you, Israel, to be a light unto the Gentiles. But if you read in that 13th chapter of the book of Acts, you see, he said to Paul, you know, I have sent you, Paul, and Barnabas, now to go out and be a light unto the Gentiles. Same wording, same wording. He changed it up, you see. And so, yeah, Isaiah 49 and 6, God clearly tells them you're going to be the light. But in um, Corinthians, I mean, uh, Acts 13, and believe 46. So on what day? What song was that? That was beautiful. Yeah, that was Isaiah. Let's turn Isaiah. to that. Let's turn to Isaiah 49. That's okay, man. <laughs> That's it. Isaiah 49 and verse 6. And he said, this is a light thing that I should be a servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore and preserve of Israel. He said, and then say, I will also give thee for a light unto the Gentiles. Listen to what he says. Okay. The whole thing that thy mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Beautiful. This is Israel's program before it was changed. Now we turn to, to Acts 13 and 46. Acts 13 and 46. It says, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, Listen, Israel, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so had the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light unto the Gentiles, yeah. that that should be for the salvation unto the ends of the earth. Now, this was Israel's program, but God changed this program to send Paul to the ends of the earth, to, 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 the, to the Gentile nations, uh, to those outside of Israel's program. Israel had rejected God's program. You see, God wanted to use them, but now God is going to use the Apostle Paul to reach the Gentiles. And you got to understand, this is the first time the Gentiles were brought back into the scene since the Tower of Babel. When God left off the Tower, uh, working with the Gentiles at the Tower of Babel, and decided now, you know, it didn't work with Adam. He failed. It didn't work with Noah. He still got really, you know, bad, you know, uh, in repenting God that he had made man. Man was so, so ter terrible. And then God, you know, God destroyed the river, the flood. And then uh, <laughs> the Tower of uh, Babel, God sees man would do anything uh, that would come to his imagination. And God comes down, scatters them, confuse their languages, and says, okay, I'm getting ready to form my nation. I'm going to pour into my nation. I'm going to show the mercy, the love, the grace, the kindness, the long suffering, the gentleness, the, the judgments, the everything I need to pour into them. So when their king come and bring them into their nation, they will know me like I was talking about earlier. If you've been through it, if you've been in it, you can speak to it. They will go out and win the world for me because they will know the heart of God. They will know their uh, 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 the, the, the grace of Almighty God upon their lives. And they will be able to share it. If you don't have a story, you don't have nothing to say. You got to have a story of what God did for you so that you can share it into another life so they could have a life approve unto God. Israel will have a story when they would go into their kingdom, you see. But
God broke off dealing with them and called Abraham and developed his nation. And when a king came, when it's time to go into their kingdom, they rejected their king. They rejected his kingdom. And so God broke off and started a new program after they stoned Stephen in that seventh chapter of the book of Acts. All this is still Israel's program from Acts 7 all the way back. That's all the way through Abraham to Abraham. This is still Israel's program. But now God calls the apostle Paul and now ascending him to the Gentiles. So we have that new apostle. He is our foundation. You know, Paul says, consider what I say and the Lord give you understandings in all things that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. That's one of those my gospels in Paul epistles. It's there in Romans 2 and 16 and Romans 16 and 25. Paul says in there, my gospel. So we have a new apostle who has brought the new message for us and to us that we may be able to share this new dispensation that we're living in. The dispensation, a set of instructions given by God for man's obedience for a specific period of time. Israel had a dispensation. We're in a dispensation of grace. When we're raptured out of here, then God will go into another dispensation to co continue and finish his program with Israel. Yeah, so we have a new dispensation, a new apostle, a new message. Uh, Romans 3 and 21, if you just turn there, we're about to wrap this up. Romans 3 and 21, we have a new message, okay? Romans 3. And 21. And it says... Yeah, it said, but now, that's another but. <laughs> we didn't find another but. But now, the righteousness of God, listen, without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God without the law is being manifested. Israel program, their righteousness came by, keep, by keeping their laws, their statutes, and all the things that God, if you read Deuteronomy 6 and 25, it will tell you where Israel's righteousness came from, by keeping the law and keeping the commandments of God. Deuteronomy 6 and 25, turn it right quick, because you may need to know this scripture as a cross-reference. 6 and 25. And here's, here's Israel, Israel's program. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he had commanded us. That's Israel's righteousness. Mm -hmm. But Paul is saying here, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. And then at the 28th verse, he said, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Mm -hmm. So, hey, man, without the deeds of the law, we're in a new dispensation with a new apostle, with a new message, which is the righteousness of God without the law. Early, I said, by grace are you saved. Uh, through faith that not of yourself it is the gift of God not of works lest anyone should boast we are saved by grace not by the works of the law not by keeping the law not by the things that are involved in Israel's program we have a new glory a new glory we glory in the cross mm. you know you see Israel never gloried in the cross mm. you know when Peter was preaching to them you have killed the prince of life if you repent He'll come back and continue this program and set up this kingdom. You see, it was a shameful thing. You know, it says in uh, the second uh, chapter of the book of Acts, when, when uh, Peter preached to them, 
and told them how they they killed their Messiah. And, and the Bible says they were pricked in their hearts. There was no glory in the cross for Israel. It was, they were pricked in their hearts. We read that in, in uh, Acts, the second chapter. And uh, Acts 2 and... Uh, where's that at new continued daily in prayer 37. 37. Okay, thank you. Acts 2 37. Now, when they heard this, they were okay. Therefore, let all the house of Israel, Peter's talking to Israel, we're still in Israel's program. Don't confuse that. That all the house of Israel know surely that God had made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? They were pricked in their hearts. But for us, the cross, if you look at Galatians 6 and 14, Galatians 6 and 14, Paul would Paul would say Galatians 6:14 Paul would say in that verse um but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. We glory in the cross. The cross is glorious. It's where all of our righteousness came from with God and God's program. But for Israel, it was a shameful thing. But for us, so we have now a new glory. Hey, man, we have a new dispensation. We're living in a new apostle. It's a new message. It's a new glory. And it's a new destination. Yeah, we have a heavenly destination. Israel has an earthly destination. Everything with Israel was of an earthly destination. But when God opened this door of grace and he opened it up to the world, he created for us a heavenly focus. That's where your focus should be. Let's look at that at uh, Colossians 3. Colossians chapter 3. And starting at verse 1. This is our focus. Mm. Listen, if ye, did, if ye then be risen with Christ, and you are risen with Christ, if you have received him and believed in his death, burial, and resurrection, you died, you were buried, and rose with him mm. to this new glory. If ye then then be risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Hey, man. And then he says, uh, set your affections. You get that? Set your affections on things above. Don't, don't be anxious. You know, be anxious for nothing but in all things through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made unto God and the peace of God that passes all under. I'm not in the script. I'm outside the scripture. And the peace of God that passes all, all understand will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So he says, set your affection on things above, not on things on this earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him. Where? In glory. Wow. What a glorious word that is. We have a new destination. We have a 
new dispensation, a new apostle, a new message, a new glory, mm -hmm. and a new destination. You ought to be excited about that today. <laughs> That's why I'm so excited, <laughs> man. <laughs> that, is, that excites me. That's why I thank God for all the word that's going forward, all the great teachers God has placed before us, all the ministers that, that are pouring into our lives. Only thing we can do is just grow more and more and more and more because we have our foundation right. We have our foundation right, and we're just building on top of it, man. We just get, you know, first it was one hour, then it was two hours a week, three hours, four hours, five hours. Then I'm studying six, seven hours. I was like, where am I finding all the time? Well, it's like, I can't help. My wife would tell you, I'm getting up all in the middle of the night, and I'm like, oh, Lord, he's got that light up in her phone. And I'm like, God would hit me with something because it connects with this. I listen, I listen to our great teachers and they talk about something and I'm walking around all week thinking about the goodness of the lesson and the new part. I'm adding this on top, on top and adding this and God is growing us and our inner man is developing because of the goodness of God and his word so richly dwelling within us. Hey man, that's exciting. I want to conclude this. A life approved unto God is a life that stand fast. It's a stand fast life. Turn to Galatians 5 and 1. It's a stand fast life, man. Galatians 5 and 1. A life approved unto God is a stand fast life. This is what God wants. This is what's pleasing to God. This is what God wants you to know, okay? God wants you to know to stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't let anybody, you see, you want to live a life pleasing of the God? You have to guard yourself from folks coming in with all kinds of stuff to tear down what God is building inside your life. You know, they're coming with words and philosophies that different things and well, what about this? And what, you don't need to entertain that conversation. You need to stand fast in the liberty. Don't let anybody put legalism and bondage upon you or tell you, you got to do this or why you not doing it. You need to stand fast in the liberty of what Christ has made you free. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, if you think you have to uh, carry some kind of religious service or you have to pay tithes, <laughs> I know that's, that's hard for a lot of people to hear. You know, you have to go into, if you don't, and look, I know I ain't got all day to preach, okay? But listen, tithing is the law. Mm. And if you go back and say, well, Abraham did it before that, where well, God made it a law. Could you show me where God made it not a law? Because if you can show me where God made it not a law, it's the only time God made it not a law when we, when he opened up this dispensation of grace that we're mm. living in. But all of Israel program, it was a law. He made it a law. He never said, well, okay, Israel, that's enough. He said, I don't have it's not going to be a law for you anymore. Because when I read in the book of uh, Hebrews, the seventh chapter, in the fifth verse, it, Hebrews seventh chapter, in the fifth verse, it tells me that it's a law. Mm -hmm. And so if Hebrews 7 tells me it's a law, I want to know when God, because it's going to be a law after we raptured out of here, because this Hebrew book is a continuation of God's program. These are epistles to the Hebrews. Okay, and so in that fifth verse, it says, and verily that they are the sons of Levi who received the office of priesthood have a, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law. I think that's clear enough for me. So, yeah, it's the law. God never not made a law. Circumcision was before the law. But you don't see that as, well, we still have to do that to as part of this righteous state that we're living. Okay, so 
hey, we have to understand our word and our word rightly divided. Stand fast in the liberty of which Christ, I kind of, I know I kind of went off a little bit, but I'm getting ready in this. Stand fast in the liberty where Christ has set you free and be not, uh, uh, and Paul said, if, uh, and Paul said that ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. I testify to every man that is circumcised, he is a debtor to the whole law. Whatever part of the law you want to keep, let me let you know something. You're the debtor to the whole law. Okay. The, you know, this is what Paul is clearly laid out. So we have to stand, we have to stand steadfast in 1 Corinthians 15, 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians 15 chapter in the 58th verse, the last verse of that 15 chapter, it says, therefore, verse, 1 Corinthians 15 and the 58th verse, it says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. That's all I'm trying to say today as uh, those who have been called by God for this hour, for this purpose that we have and, and, and to, to bless the saints of God, to understand God's word rightly divided. We have to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye you know, your labor is not in vain. Your labor is not in vain. And this is my last verse, and I'm getting ready to conclude this. We turn to Galatians 2 and 20. Galatians 2 and 20. This is going to conclude with this verse here. I thank God for the opportunity. I'm so excited that I've had this opportunity. I'm always excited when I get a chance to speak on the word of God. I, it's a blessing to me, man. It's like, what? They going to let me speak? Okay. <laughs> I ain't got to pay them nothing. I, could, I, just, I just got to show up. Man. <laughs> Yeah, I don't care where it's at. I get there. I'll find my way there. I, I just, I'm just so excited when someone gives me the privilege of sharing the word. I don't be having that many people to talk to. You don't understand, man. I got people listen to me. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm going there. I'm going there, man. <laughs> and so, Galatians two, and I want to end with this. I believe the Lord wanted me to end with this when I was kind of preparing this. And verse 20, we all familiar with this scripture and it means something to each and every one of us. And uh, I thank God for you guys, man. I really do. I thank God for each of you. I just, I love you guys, man. And I just thank God that I'm, you know, I've some kind of way Jerry have got me in here and I'm just like, I'm just some kind of way you know, and I just thank God that I, 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 I heeded to the call and got a chance to see exactly what you guys have and what you're doing. And it's just been a blessing to my life. This scripture here is a scripture I want to, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith mm. of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Mm. God bless you. God keep you. I pray that something was said that would minister to you, to others. You would bring it to them. Because that's our calling to reach out to others. Thank you. God bless you. God keep you. God bless Amen. you. Amen. Thank you. Oh, my God. Uh, thank you, David. Thank you, David. Thank you, Brother David. Ooh, uh, I'd like to say something. Uh, my view thing doesn't work. And I was totally blown away through the entire message. I'm elated. I'm overjoyed. <laughs> my heart, I was crying. I was laughing. I was cheering. And that's all I got to say. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>
All right. All right. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Brother David. It was very powerful. Praise the Lord. Uh, <laughs> did I break your glasses? No, no, you're good. <laughs> okay. Hey, is everybody awake there? Mm -hmm. Amen. So, uh, did I break your glasses? No, we're no good. I just got a little sweat on it. That's I get a little carried away. That's all right. I love it. So, uh, Wow. Hello, everybody. I guess you're awake now. Uh, wish everybody on Zoom a great day. Thank you for joining in. Uh, if you weren't blessed, it was your fault. <laughs> no, I, uh, wow. So um, what a message. A message Amen. of grace. Amen. message of life. Uh, a message of redemption. Yeah. Which is which is vitally vitally needed in the church. Um, did I break the glasses? <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, we've had a great time today. Thank you, David Candy, for coming. Thank you, David, for the uh, lesson. Thanks everybody for joining in on Zoom. Uh, thanks everybody for coming. I think it's time for coffee and dessert and some reflection. So. Tell them it'll be on YouTube within a day or so. I'll be on YouTube within a day or so. And Ernie and Elizabeth, we miss you, Ernie and Elizabeth. Miss you teaching today, David. Did I break your glasses? Okay. <laughs> Put my email in the chat. Uh, I think if anybody wants the, the, to the link right away, you can uh, email me and I will send you the, the link. From uh, from Zoom, and you can just access the link and go ahead and watch it. Uh, Lisa, the uh, I, I can upload the Zoom meetings pretty quickly. So okay. after okay. you send it to me, it'll be up within a couple hours after you send it to me. Okay, and awesome. then I can I can see the link on YouTube. Awesome. I want I want to read the messages that people wrote for David. Okay. Um, excellent message. Lisa, this is Sylvia. Would you please send me the link once it's on YouTube? I would like to record it. Uh, and then Paul said, I would like to have it on YouTube too. Great message. Praise the Lord. And then Benoit is going to put it on his website. Rejoice in the Lord.ca will have the MP3 recording. And um, Paul said, thank you, brother. Okay. Yeah, best message I've ever heard from David. Very good. Thank you, Woo! David. Man. I wrote, I wish I was there to give him a hug. Amen. Well, I, I hugged him for everybody. Broke his glasses and everything. He's never coming back. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, once again, uh, you folks on the internet, uh, put it on your calendar. First weekend in December, uh, our uh, Grace Conference in uh, Covington, Louisiana. Come on down Come on. with us uh, if you can't. Uh, we will be zooming it out from the Notel Hotel and uh, first, second, and third of December. So uh, y'all, uh, I'm just going to say, David, we've been doing this home church since we moved up here. And th this isn't the brag, but this, this room we're in was built for home church. Mm -hmm. Um and and Gail been yeah this table was this table we're sitting at was designed because Lisa and I are the only people live here and we got a fourteen foot table uh, so but we uh, uh and I mean to to me this is just the beginning you know the last year was kind of test and not test and do this and do that and I mean we we got I wish y'all were all here because I. I am surrounded by the most magnificent saints. Some of that are not here, Connie, Stan, Jerry, Lisa and I are surrounded by magnificent saints every time we have home church. And and and, and you go, oh, it can't get better. It does. I mean, it gets better. These folks here in person are wonderful to Lisa and I just absolute givers. The Christ in them is 
they hang out with us, they leave, and it, it's like, you believe that? You believe what those folks did? So, uh, and hey, y'all too, believe me, on, on Zoom, y'all encourage us. When I look up, and I know we don't count nickels and noses, but when I look up and saw 16 to 17 people, and, and then hearing the message that y'all received, it's like, God, you really doing this? God, you you letting this happen in my little house out in the middle of nowhere? You know, so I need to shut up so we can go have dessert. So, and I'll try not to break anything else, David. So we love y'all on Zoom. Wish y'all love you too. Love you too. Love you too. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Take care. Love you, Dave. Bye. Thank Great you. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye-bye, y'all. Bye, everybody. So glad you were Bye -bye. with us. Love y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hugs, hugs. See you later. How do we get out of here? Uh, here, I'll close it. I'll close it. Bye-bye, everybody. Awesome.